Open Heart Kitchen's mission is to serve prepared nutritious meals free of charge to the hungry people of the Tri-Valley area. We were founded in 1995 and we serve meals at multiple locations in Dublin, Livermore, and Pleasanton. Last year, Open Heart Kitchen served 541,937 meals to people in need. In 2020, we've seen an 60% increase in meals compared to last year. This follows a growing trend in our community, a growing need. And this is just some statistics to demonstrate um, that those 541,000 meals, excuse me, means there is a real need for hunger relief or food assistance in the Tri-Valley. In our county, one in five residents is experiencing or at risk of hunger. And poverty is defined as a measure of income, which is used by the US government to determine who is eligible for subsidies, programs, and benefits, such as food stamps, now known as SNAP, or health insurance like Covered California or Medi-Cal. The poverty level for a household of four in 2020 was an annual income of $25,750. And food security is defined as the condition in which all people at all times have physical, social, and economic access to nutritious and culturally appropriate food for an active and healthy lifestyle. And this is where we see Open Heart Kitchen really doing our work. The rate of food insecurity has risen by nearly 5% in our county in the last two years, according to a report by Feeding America on the impact of the coronavirus. This chart shows uh, the number of meals we've served over the last three years and that 60% increase in meals that we've served compared to last uh, year in 2019. Uh, this clearly shows the growing need in our community and the impact of the pandemic on our clients. So on a human level, this means that our clients are forced to choose uh, between some really hard choices. When you have a limited income or an unexpected crisis, you are forced to make some tough choices. For example, we know that the Bay Area is one of the most expensive housing markets in the country. In Alameda County, a household might be paying half or more of their monthly income for a two bedroom apartment and getting more stressed about paying for other expenses, including food, which means, meanwhile, they're trying to make ends meet in our county and rapidly um, the annual income to afford this lifestyle is approaching $100,000 per year for two working adults or the equivalent of more than three full-time minimum wage jobs for a family of four. So often our clients are choose between paying for food or medicine or utilities or their food and shelter. These are our three main programs uh, right now. We have our hot meal program, which welcomes anyone in need. Anyone who's struggling to make ends meet can rely on us for a source of nutrition throughout the week for their families. And our senior meal program serves senior friendly meals at various senior centers throughout the Tri-Valley, promoting both social interaction and healthy eating. And our street outreach program delivers breakfast items and hot meals to people living in homeless encampments or transitional housing, such as domestic violence shelters. We expanded street outreach last year from one delivery a week to six days a week and included breakfast and snacks. And we also distributed tents, clothing, and personal protective equipment, such as masks and hand sanitizer. And this slide shows our operations, and I'll have Felicia talk a little bit about it. Um, our operations changed drastically last year. All of our meals are now curbside to go pick up in order to comply with social distancing and the shelter in place orders. After we made the difficult decision to suspend volunteer shifts, we did get support from all three cities who supplied Serve Safe certified staff to keep our doors open and keep meals going out to the community. So in March, we also hired a new operations director, Felicia Ellis, and she implemented a whole new menu, which is called the Arties for Healthcare, 
uh, which meets state and federal regulations to meet recommended dietary allowances. And a registered dietitian also reviews our menus monthly. So I'll let Felicia add any uh, additional details she'd like to share about our operations. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. And uh, piggybacking off of what Denise just mentioned, yes, um, I come from a health care background. So the food choices that are the most healthiest, uh, I prefer um, in any kitchen that I'm operating to go with the RDs for health care menus. Uh, there's a major, major uh, shift in what they originally started with with their menus to now it's more geared towards all of the more comfort foods um, when people are in hospitals you know they want to be comforted because they really want to come home so now that we're not able to dine together i just took a stab and said you know let's have comfort food that we can pick up at the curbside so we have some wonderful cooks and chefs in the kitchen and they are always cooking up something very very uh healthy, but it also tastes great. Thanks, Felicia. In this slide, the photo at the top left shows our meals being prepared in our main production kitchen in Pleasanton. And then they are loaded into warming containers called Cambros uh, that are loaded onto our delivery trucks and delivered to all of our meal sites directly to our diners for curbside pickup. And a little bit more about our hot meal program. Our hot meal program started serving hot meals seven days a week in 2017, and we used to serve at a total of five sites throughout the Tri-Valley. Uh, starting in April of last year, we consolidated services to one hot meal site at Robert Livermore Community Center for five days a week. And we typically serve homeless, senior citizens on a fixed income, unemployed, uh, veterans, and the working poor and about half of our hot meal clients are seniors as well. And there is no reservation or proof of income required to pick up a meal. And you can also pick up up to four servings for your family. Our senior meal program addresses the nutritional gap for low income seniors. We serve senior friendly meals Monday through Friday at four locations. The program provides necessary nutrition as well as emotional well being, and we ask for reservations in advance. Uh, and our menus are posted on our website monthly. In this program, we saw the most dramatic need. There was 964 seniors that signed up for the senior meal program for the first time last year. And we still outreach to our seniors via flyers, robocalls, and supply resources over the phone in case they need any uh, more further assistance. Our Children's Weekend Bag Lunch Program uh, provides bag lunches to children who receive free weekend, free and reduced school lunches during the week, but lack a secure source of nutrition over the weekend. Our bag lunches were distributed to 29 schools in Dublin, Pleasanton, and Livermore and served 2,710 children. Currently, the bag lunch program is suspended due to the COVID situation, but the school districts and the Alameda County Community Food Bank are providing free nutritious meals to the children during this difficult time. And that's also listed all on our website. And our latest meal distribution site is located at the Alameda County Fairgrounds and I'll have Shonda Bost talk about this location. Hello, everyone. So free groceries are distributed by OHK and Tri-Valley Haven in par partnership with Alameda County Food Bank with funding from the Alameda County Social Services Agency and the cities of Pleasanton, Livermore, and Dublin. This site operates on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Alameda County Fairgrounds in Pleasanton. This new site will remain open through June, and to date we have served over 1,400 unique households. And next, we'd like to highlight some of our community partners from uh, the year who really helped us. 
We receive fresh produce from the Alameda County Community Food Bank, and we're also a partner agency. City serve the Tri Valley and Tri Valley Haven, often help our clients through crisis. City serve provided masks for our clients, and Tri Valley Haven partners with us on the new grocery distribution at the Alameda County Fairgrounds. And for fundraising, one big highlight for me was this donation from Total Wine and More. Last year, from August 3rd to September 13th, all of their customers in the Bay Area received five times loyalty points on their purchases, and the points was converted to their dollar value of their donation, which was what we received, which was $82,490. So this is our kitchen staff holding that big check. And this was in our local Pleasanton store as well. And we could not be Open Heart Kitchen without our volunteers. Many of you are volunteers on the call. We'll still need you in the future. And we have drastically changed uh, for last year because of the pandemic. We usually had 450 volunteers a week in our kitchens and at the meal sites but now we have very limited volunteer shifts. We're down to 40 volunteers, mostly at the Alameda County Fairgrounds. But we wanted to recognize our volunteers and thank you for your service. One case in point was when we made the call for our holiday bags. Our volunteers were very generous and collected uh, holiday bags with essential items for the winter months for our homeless clients and our low income families. The bags included bottled water, socks, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, emergency blankets, wipes, hand sanitizer, masks, gift cards to local restaurants and non-perishable food as well. And 1,069 holiday bags were collected from our volunteers and just distributed to people in need even animal volunteers helped us as well, their pets in the car, it was really cute. That concludes our, uh, see, I have one more slide, I'm sorry. The um, future for Open Heart Kitchen is this building here. Our vision is to have a community resource center building next to permanent supportive housing. And the housing side will include uh, 24 units, apartments. The community resource center building will be our new home for our main kitchen. Denise, you're muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, where did you um, last hear me start? Was it when I changed the slide? We were hearing about the new kitchen here. Okay. Just go ahead. I don't know how that happened. But thank you for stopping me. Um, so the housing side will include 24 apartment units, specifically for uh, people that have been uh, experiencing chronic homelessness. And the Community Resource Center building will be our new home for our main dining room and main production kitchen. So we'll move over from Pleasanton at Ridgeview Commons where we are now and have our own uh, space. And the amenities include offices, meeting spaces, showers, laundry services, and clothing closet, along with community serving programs such as case management, counseling, wellness, and social service and housing referral. And right now our partners in this project are the Housing Consortium of the East Bay and the Livermore Homeless Refuge. The currently Livermore Homeless Refuge partners with faith-based communities to offer temporary shelter during cold weather from November to April. And the Resource Center will, will provide a space for Livermore Homeless Refuge to no longer need to rotate locations between churches and have a clean, safe environment for the homeless to stay overnight. So we're really excited about this project. So you'll hear more about this in the future.
So I will end there. This is my email address. So if there are any questions that you think of after the call, uh, please email me or feel free to contact me. Uh, right now we will go to some questions that were submitted earlier. Um, many volunteers on the call, so I wanted to bring this up first. Uh, when can we volunteer again? And I'll have Shonda answer that one. So right now we have roughly 40 volunteer shifts available and all of those shifts have been filled. And we ask for your patience as we slowly reintro reintroduce volunteers back into our programs and implement measures to keep everyone safe. We are just as eager as you to get back to what we were doing before the pandemic. As a former volunteer, you are our biggest champions and we hope that you will continue to spread the word about our work. And I also have a question about whether we've seen an increase in need last year because of the pandemic. I'll have uh, Taylor address that one. Hi, everybody. Um, there's definitely been an increased need that we've seen over this past year, especially. Um, obviously, the pandemic has been really difficult on our entire community, and certain groups in particular are, you know, seem seeming to have a greater need than others. Um, so as Denise mentioned previously in the presentation, in 2020, we uh, welcomed 964 new, new senior diners to our senior meal program. This was a, a huge increase. Um, and I know I, I get to work with our programs closely. And I know that a lot of the, the calls coming in and a lot of the new seniors coming to our sites for the very first time, they cited their fears around going into grocery stores and, and picking up food for themselves, um, they, they were fearful to do so during a pandemic. So um, they, they were able to learn about our program and try us out for the first time. And they feel the comfort of having a safe drive-through process for getting meals. And for a lot of our seniors, um, it's, it's been a great way to, to stretch the food resources that they do have access to. Um, we also, as Shonda mentioned, with our new um, grocery distribution at the Alameda County Fairgrounds, we're serving 1,400 new households. Um, some of the, the clients at that site do join us at other locations, but um, the, the vast majority, I should say, are, are new households that are new to Open Heart Kitchen seeking this grocery resource. So that's really been um, a, a big indicator of the need in our community that we're, we're seeing right now. And I can also just speak to um, the increased need that our street outreach clients are facing. Um, a lot of resources have been closed off to them during the pandemic for, you know, to, to follow with protocols and guidelines. So um, that's why we've increased the number of days that we're serving, the amount and the type of foods and snacks that we're serving to those clients, as well as how we're connecting them with other resources, such as, you know, laundry services, um, shower services, things like that, those basic human, you know, needs that they're, they're seeking. So definitely a, an increased need. Thank you. Uh, let's see, the next question is, um, what has changed for Open Heart Kitchen uh, due to the quarantine? How are you doing? And I'll have uh, Heather, our executive director, answer that. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see a lot of familiar faces that I haven't seen in a while. So thank you for joining us today. Um, a lot has changed because of COVID. Most of it is um, administrative and operational changes, but Client facing, um, obviously we had to close all of our dining rooms and all of our meals are served curbside to go uh, for pickup only. Uh, the other big change was our street outreach program where we are delivering meals directly in the encampments to our unhoused uh, friends and neighbors. Uh, we were doing that only one day a week pre-COVID and now we're doing it six days a week and we've drastically increased what we're giving them. Uh, Denise mentioned that they're getting breakfast bags now and uh, anything that helps them shelter in place, any uh, hygiene supplies or socks, 
things that they need to try to stay clean and comfortable. Um, the other major change is we've really ramped up a lot of our partnerships. Um, it really does take a village because we are working hand in hand with our, our other nonprofit partners and the cities and the county to, you know, basically we've been in emergency response for almost a year now. Um, so that's really been the, the big changes for us. And um, I'll hand it back to Denise and you can let us know if there are any other questions. Okay. We also have a question about what do we need? Can I donate food or supplies? And right now uh, we are not taking donations of food or supplies from individuals. However, we always could use bottled water and food service gloves. So if uh, tangible items are what you're looking for to donate, we do have an Amazon wish list uh, that we can share in the chat. And if you've already supported us through a monetary donation, you can help spread the word by telling your family and friends about Open Heart Kitchen and follow our Facebook page and share our posts. Be a community cheerleader for us would be the the best thing you can do for us too. Uh, we do have a, also a lot of questions around the new kitchen site. Um, so this is the first time I've heard about Vineyard 2.0. When will the building be completed? And what is the timing for this building uh, for Vineyard 2.0 to be done? Um, our initial timeline was delayed due to, to the pandemic. But last May, we did receive unanimous approval from the City of Livermore's Planning Commission for the site design plan and the conditional use permit for the site. So we hope to have the Community Resource Center uh, building completed in about three years. We have last question about what is the best way to donate money? Uh, the easiest way is to donate through our website where you can also sign up to be a monthly recurring donor or give any amount for a one-time donation. Uh, we also have a way to lead a virtual food drive on our website if you would like to start a campaign and get your family and friends to donate through your own online portal for Open Heart Kitchen. You can create your own website in about five minutes through a virtual food drive so that instead of collecting canned goods, you're helping collect donations on our behalf. And that's really the most flexible way uh, to provide donations to us because uh, that allows us the opportunity to purchase the ingredients that we need for our meals. We have a couple of new questions that just came in on our chat. Um, one new question is how do you handle dietary restrictions or allergies? I'm back. This is Felicia. I guess I'm going to have to answer that question, right? So with the Arties for Healthcare menu, um, a lot of allergens are foods that are not on the menu, so that does help. Uh, with our menu, I try to include what is in the meal. So let's say, for example, we have a open house, uh, open house, open heart kitchen house salad. It will list the ingredients that we're using. That way, Anyone who is planning on having a meal that day, they can, you know, gracefully bow out because maybe they're allergic to the eggs, which we're using for protein. We're also looking into getting some other foods that are not allergen and cause people to have problems that will be another healthier source of protein as well. So we work really hard uh, to make sure that the food is, will agree with uh, uh, the mass with the masses. Uh, some of our recipes do, um, we do use milk. Um, if we're making a macaroni and cheese, there's really no way around that unless we use maybe an almond milk or something like that, but we have not uh, decided to go that route just yet. Um, I oftentimes advise people that if you have an allergy, by all means, uh, my email address is available. You can always email me, you can call me. So Denise, if you want to uh, send that out, or anyone wants to send out my information, I can help people individually that way. I think it'll be a little bit easier. Yes, and that 
is a great transition to the next question. We'll put your contact information in the chat. So we also had questions about where we could drop off bottled water and gloves. So. Hey everyone, I'm back one more time. <laughs> you can uh, come by RVC. Uh, what I what I like people to do is to give me a call when you're outside and then uh, myself or even some of the other staff will come out and grab those bottles for you. The best time to make a drop off of bottle of waters or if you wanna drop off hand sanitizer or if you're dropping off gloves is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. right here in Pleasanton. So Denise, if we could give them the address in the chat. Mm -hmm. It's at 5200 Case Avenue, so put that in. Well, actually, use the 5150 so they can drive behind the kitchen. Otherwise, everyone will be in the front of Ridgeview and they'll not know why they're there. Okay. So okay. when you drive into the driveway, everyone, whenever or you're asking someone to drive into that driveway, you just keep driving all the way to the back of the complex and you'll see a big nice open heart kitchen sign and trucks and vans that we make our deliveries. Okay, and we have another question about uh, when will groundbreaking on the new North Livermore site occur? I'll take that one. Uh, that's the vineyard project and we're hoping to break, break ground this summer. Very exciting. I think that's all of the questions we have now. So you all are very attentive. Thank you for participating and for sending in your questions to us. If anything else comes up, feel free to contact any of us if you'd like to follow up. Um, my email's there um, and we'll have Felicia's contact info available as well. Um, and we're ending the session early. So. Thank you for joining us on your lunch hour, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. I enjoyed Thank it. You. Thank you.